In this video we're going to work through two separate workflows to design a stream channel realignment. So our first workflow we're going to use the terrain module uh, and with that our workflow is going to be uh, along the lines of what you'd use for the design of a bulk excavation. Uh, now with that it'll work, we'll get our volumes, but uh, our next workflow we're going to switch over and use uh, Softree's location module. Um, so the, the module for designing linear infrastructure. We won't go into a ton of detail with that, uh, but the, the main takeaway is just how much more interactive it is uh, and dynamic when designing those uh, linear infrastructures and, and producing your uh, associated uh, uh, design package. So with that, we'll jump into our example. So this example, it's a fictional example. Uh, we've got some mining in this area, and our fictional example is that we want to uh, realign the stream down here to make room for uh, more mining operations. And with that, we're just going to push the stream channel against this far bank. So to do this, we've already got our train file built. We've got the train file as a topo uh, saved, and we have an ortho image in the background to add context for what we're dealing with. So that first workflow of doing the design and terrain, we're going to jump out of that. We're going to open a new instance of terrain. I'm going to right click plan options. I'm going to add that in as a background. both the image and the top of the background file. And we're getting a warning that I don't have my um, projection or coordinate system set to match my backgrounds. Um, in this case, it won't make any difference since I'm using the, the same units. Both are uh, metric projects. But if we want those to match more as a, a best practice than anything else in this case, we'll just come in here. We'll grab that WKT information. And let's assign that back into this file. So we have our where we want to start our realignment down here. And we want to end it there. So I'm going to start by drawing the center line into my channel. New feature. Want it to be a break line. I'll name it just so it's easier to find later. And I'm going to create it using our mouse. And I think the elevation I wanted here was 476. And so I'm at 476.6. That was, that was pretty close. And we could change that if we'd like. Um, in this case, it's close enough for me. So I'm going to draw this in. If we'd like, we can make that line a little heavier and and let's assume we want to end right there in that low point. And I'll make a few edits here just to hug that wall. Looking pretty good. I'm going to click my profile view. So right now, my elevation is flat. I wasn't snapping to anything underneath and it's not a draped feature. Um, and just so we can have a better idea of what's going on here, I'm going to exaggerate my scale. So I want my horizontal scale to be 1 to 2000 and I want my vertical scale to be 1 to 200. So there, we can see what we're dealing with. It makes sense. I'm going to change my symbol in this view. 
and looking pretty good. Now we want that stream channel to be on a gradient. So we'll set that down there. And we'll go through and whatever we'd like for a gradient we'll set. And there may be other parameters that you want to account for. In my case, I just want to make sure water is going to go downhill. And maybe we add in a pool here. And we can tile these so we can see both at the same time. I won't worry about my 3D yet. So there we are. And I'm going a little ways there. Let's add in another. Oh, great. We'll push that over a bit. Looks good. And again, that's on purpose. I just want it to be my pool. Uh, as an optional uh, step, if we want to have this is a, a bit smoother of a feature, we can come in here, we can smooth the feature, so add a spline curve in there, and since we're changing the shape of things, we can make a few adjustments, but it should largely resemble what we had. So that is my center line. Now to capture my channel width, let's Uh, do, do, do. Buffer the feature, modify buffer, and let's offset both sides, do a linear offset, and I want my, this is about 20 meters across, so I want this to match, we'll set that as a offset 10 on either side, and slope, we could add a slope here if we'd like, I want it to just be zero. Looking good still. And here I want to join both those sides. That's an optional step. Um, this makes it easier down the road. And I'm going to close it so that's all one feature. So if that's the bottom of my channel, to grade that up to the uh, rest of the topo surface, first I'm going to check the direction of the feature. So I want to grade to the left. Train modeling, grading, grade to the left, target topo surface. I want my slopes to be 2 to 1. We'll set our uh, slope line spacing at a 5 meter maximum. And we'll set our daylight calculator volumes all in one go. And we'll switch what's considered the original ground. And we can see that we've got a whole lot of cut, not much fill. And when we hit close, yikes. There's all sorts of uh, locations where I've uh, gone too close to the kind of valley wall and I've got those long cuts going up. Now, that's that. Uh, we could go through this again. We could move those lines uh, and rework the process and iteratively get something that works reasonably well. Let's explore how that looks doing it in a location. So we'll start from the same place. We've got that topo file that's been created. I'm going to add in my background. For the image. And I'm going to change my cross section geometry to suit uh, what I have here. So rather than being a road, I want it to represent my channel. And for this, I'll just use the same uh, template. 
We don't need the ditch components. I don't need any surfacing material. Actually, and I want it to be a 20 meter width, so we'll go 10 either side. We'll remove that, we'll make the right side the same. And don't want to have super elevation or crown. So I've set my cross section template up. We're going to take this, we're going to go over here, and see as we click, that's going to update in real time in our 3D here. But as we do this, I want to have my surface that I'm designing all automatically render for me. We'll keep it as cyan. Actually. So there we are. And now we can design in both views. We can see how we're interacting with the surrounding slope. Oh, and here my cut slope's too steep. So let's just assign that here. We can wiggle around the slope. We can see, okay, here I've got that interaction that I don't want. We can pull that around. We can add curves as we desire. And there's no need to rework anything because we're making the decisions we want to make as we design here in real time. So we'll follow along. And there. I can see I've got a couple bad spots. So here I've got an interaction I don't want to have. We'll pull it out. There we'll pull it out. And let's apply a curve. And rather than assigning each one, uh, let's just apply a bunch of curves. So there we are. We've got our design done. We're actually figuring out the location. Maybe I'll decide I want to tweak something like that. Maybe instead of adjusting it in that plane, we change our grade. And I'll decide to put my channel down here. So pretty slick, pretty easy to work with, and pretty easy to get good results. Um, so that's the actual figuring out the problem. Both cases, if we want to work with this in GPS machine controls, uh, we can export, or uh, conventional survey equipment, we can export that as a CSV, uh, ASCII file, a bunch of different formats, so DWG, DGN, uh, land XML, etc. Um, if we want to produce a, a paper design or a conventional design package, uh, we can. Go back into train. If we want to do that here, um, no problem. Uh, we can do that. So I've got my profile, I've got my plan. Uh, if I want cross sections, I'll have to manually add those in. Um, so here we'll go new feature. In this case, I want it to be draped. And we can cut those sections, but we have to manually tell the uh, computer where we do that.
and we can see that new section by clicking new window profile oh. and there's that section that we've just cut and keep in mind I still have that with a, an exaggerated scale um, so we can get our information out of the model and then we can come over to our multiplot editor and we can add in those individual subviews and we can whoops multiplot let me just turn that on and I can add those individual subviews so we'll go plan and then we can add in profile etc move things around as we wish um, now with this it's set up to do design bulk earthworks um, so typically you'll want to fit that all on one page now with these linear infrastructure projects the uh, multi-plot functionality in location is going to be more uh, user-friendly and with that we'll typically want our profile plan and we'll want cross sections and set intervals so we can come over to this multi-plot once again we can build our document from scratch with our plan profile etc uh, but the document is organized by chapters or, or pages inside chapters inside a workbook so rather than starting from scratch we can just go on to the uh, access web library bring in a size B sheet or size B chapter and there's my chapter and I can make edits to whatever I'd like so here if I want a different scale we can here you can control what's being shown here um, you can move project names project details around and once I have that set up I can save that as a, a template to use in future projects and with this it's going to automatically scroll uh, to fit the project on a sheet and here for that's not uh, landing all on the sheet we can manually adjust it so I'm just using the keyboard on my mouse or sorry keyboard buttons using the arrow keys and control to rotate and I can do shift to shift and there we are perfect so I've got what I'd like uh, so plan over profile and we can do the same thing to generate our cross sections and there we are and I can tell it how frequently we produce those uh, cross sections in here and in this case I have it set to produce them in 20 meter intervals so that's the two separate workflows uh, just to recap we did the terrain approach which is treating it as a bulk excavation uh, then we switched over and we used the location approach which uh, treats it more as your classic linear infrastructure design where we have a center line uh, it's dynamic so as we move it our cross section that's attached to that's going to move and we're going to see how that interacts with the surrounding terrain in real time